Are, are, are you guys in any cast text groups at all? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a real headline. Ex-chemistry teacher gets four years for cooking meth. You know what? <laughs> Things worked yeah, out so well for Walter out so White. Great. And I've, I've been a member of the DC Universe. Sure. This is yeah. absolutely <laughs> like you give them nothing. And looking at him like he's out of his mind every time he's suggested to do something. Fair enough. Stupid. I feel like I've yeah. seen you look at me in the years on junkets. Just <laughs> yeah. out of his mind. You've only what asked are you a laughing few, for? You've only asked yeah. a few questions that made <laughs> yeah. me look at you there. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Guys, good to see you both nice again. Nice to see you, man. Um, I love this idea of an author creating a character and not being able to shake him. Wherever she goes, she sees Argyle talking to her, looking back. I'm sort of curious if you guys have an acting equivalent of that, a character that years later has stuck with you, you think about, maybe, you know, you, you see him when you look in the mirror, kind of maybe not that, that exaggerated, but the idea of not being able to shake someone. I can't get Sam out of my head. <laughs> it's mostly oh, traumatic. God. Sort of yeah. like Lucky PTSD. you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I certainly hope you dance as well as you dress. There's only one way to find out. And I can't get him out of my head. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot it's of dreaming. It's a pleasurable experience. That's, that's more pleasurable, yeah. yeah. Is not there so much, not so much trauma. Argyle text group? Uh, no. There is no. not. There no, might be. There's not, but there should be, yeah. Oh, yeah? What is it you do? Espionage. I text with Brian and a, a mutual friend sometimes. That's good. I'm always sort of curious whenever you hear like the, the cast text groups, like how you decide yeah. whether or not it's going to happen. Are, are, are you guys in any cast text groups at all? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Little help? Hold on. Uh, I mean, text groups, they, they sometimes they work, but typically they're just put together because someone wants to organize a dinner and then everyone is worried about bothering everyone else, so they don't get back off the text. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they come and go, and yeah. sometimes they come back. Oh my god, you're Ellie freaking Conway. Author of the Argyle series, Ellie Conway! I am such a fan! So much of this movie begins with a, a fan encounter. A man sits down on a train and says, I'm such a big fan of you. What is the craziest, most interesting fan encounter you've ever had? Oh my goodness. Well, you probably have. Um, I've, had, I've had some crazy ones. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't want to obviously speak poorly of anyone, so probably best not to repeat. <laughs> I would imagine I've had some crazy stuff happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I it's almost I haven't had crazy stuff happen to me. I've had crazy stuff happen to other people, which yeah. is even worse. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. so, yeah, it, it can get crazy. Do you, do you have rules then for for people yeah. watching that that might be lucky enough to see you guys out in public? Like, is there rule number one of like? As long as you do this, we're cool. Yeah, I think um, you know the, the 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 pictures on the iPhones has become the new autograph. It's a little like I don't know how I feel about it. I think uh, a fist bump, you yep. know, maybe a. I, I think um, yeah, on that vein, just it's uh, we in in this digital age and everything being so rushed and so quick, and sometimes we all forget our manners, mm -hmm. and it's nice to at least say hi. Excuse me. Uh, do you mind if we take a selfie, even if you're in a super rush? But if you're just running up and going, can I get a selfie? Then yeah, all of a sudden it feels a little bit. Quit. Yeah. yeah. Manners yeah. and just remembering to be a human, I feel like, goes yeah. a long way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. speaking yeah. for myself, not for Sam, we're humans too. <laughs> it's time for you to meet the real Agent Argyle. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know, obviously, and you've spoken about this before, years back you auditioned for, for James Bond, but I'm sort of curious, when you get to play a role like this, or even like Man From U.N.C.L.E., which I think is a masterpiece, yeah. if you ever thought about how you would play Bond, do you feel like you got to sort of exercise those muscles in a way that you got to do the, the things that... Well, this is sort of super spy tropes turned up to 11, mm -hmm. so it's not really like that. Um, it's, it's more sort of the self-serious, sort of sniffing around the edges of that kind of character, but... It can't be that character because of the nature of the tone of the movie. Mm -hmm. So it has to sort of lean into a, a metaphorical and sometimes actual wink at camera mm -hmm. and and also remain real to the character. But it can't be too naturalistic, which I imagine would be a bit more down the other vein of spy stuff. 
For sure. Guys, I could talk with you all day. <clears throat> hey. I, I really hope that this isn't the uh, the only Argyle junket that we're doing. Hopefully, we'll see you guys back okay. for, for part two. And York. all of that yeah. implies. Guys, thank you. I appreciate Thanks. your time. So Good to see you guys again. Great to you see you, too. I love this idea of creating a story and then all of a sudden looking up, opening up a newspaper and actually seeing that story in the headlines. When well, you wrote a new new book, actually happened, and you kicked a hornet's nest you didn't even know existed. I have a couple of headlines I would like to read to you guys. Yes. Okay. And just see if you if they seem familiar. These are actual, real news headlines. Scientists are reincarnating the woolly mammoth to return in four years. Makes sense. Yeah. I think that's Have you possible. seen Jurassic? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It seems It sounds like a it. really smart plan. Because <laughs> it totally worked out Nothing fine. Nothing can yeah. go Six wrong. Six times. Nothing. Totally yeah. worked out. <laughs> and this is a real headline. Ex-chemistry teacher gets four years for cooking meth. What is that feeling like when you see your own fictional projects in headlines like that? I, I don't know if it, if my show uh, spawned that kind of thought. Like, you know what? <laughs> things worked yeah, out I'm so well things worked for out Walter so White. Great. <laughs> Why don't I try it? What a happy ending <laughs> <Yes>. that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible decision. <laughs> I, I love this idea of uh, an unshakable character. Ellie creates this character and she sees him everywhere she goes. She looks in the mirror, he's talking back to her. I'm sort of curious if you guys have an acting equivalent of that. Maybe not the character talking back to you in the mirror, but a, a character that you still think about to this day that still has st hung around with you that you haven't been able to shake years later. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. What I'll say is that when I was um, young, I wanted to, uh, this is gonna sound so random, um, I heard that Mel Gibson studied uh, the physiology of acting and was able to just by understanding his physiology do things like cry on cue. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, ooh, I'm gonna try to learn how to do that. And um, and what I would do would is I would, I would be practicing that but I would do the the Juliet death speech in Romeo and Juliet like over and over again, and that would be the thing where I would see if I could do it at uh, a certain you're moment. You're supposed to say spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, haven't seen it I yet. was just gonna watch it tonight. Yeah. I'm so sorry, I ruined it for all these fans. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone um, watching that has not seen Breaking Bad or Romeo and Juliet, we have screwed you yes, so much with yes, this interview. Yes, very much yeah. so. But that. It, it's interesting because that, like, I, I did that, like, every night for probably a couple of years. And so it's, like, I, my brain certainly so goes little, there. So you flip a switch. A little bit, yeah. But you have to be hydrated before, at least. Well, I have to. Before. I mean, it's just phys physiological, but yeah. that is just, like, a memory that I have. You have to, you lift your soft palate yeah. and That's you're just wild. hydrated. And then, and, then it, and then it goes. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, there is, I love whenever I watch a PG-13 film, and I know because of the rules that you get one F-bomb. You just, you're allowed one, and you deliver it so well. Oh, your F-bomb is fantastic. What is your favorite swear word that each of you have said on camera? Hmm. You've had some good ones. I, yeah, but I think it, I, I, I like the simpler ones, not the, the one that are so biting. You're goddamn right. Like, I think I must have called Jesse on Breaking Bad a, you're just a jackass, or something <laughs> something kind of simple and, and sweet. Why those? Why, why the, um, the natural ones? Why the simple ones? Well, because I think, I think um, the heavy duty curse words mm -hmm. are overused many times. Uh, and I, I think when you overuse something, it loses its, its impact. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to be very judicious about how I use my damn curse words. Thanks for asking. You're very welcome. You're very, do you have a favorite? Well, I mean, there's. I played Rosalind in As You Like It, and she hurls some pretty good insults. Uh, you know, very specific insults. But I'm I'm very sad because I've never gotten to say my first or my favorite curse word. They've never let you say it. Nah. And it's you gonna, know what? They're happen. not going to let them say it now. <laughs> it's Chicago. It's fine. <laughs> it's Chicago. Come on. It's the Chicago way. Um, goes without saying that a lot of people in this film are put in danger basically because of a cat. God, I hate that cat. And I can't make fun of that because honestly, I love my dog more than I love most people on this planet. What? I mean, no joke. I actually jumped in a Chicago frozen lake one time because she slipped and fell in. I had to go Bless. get her. So she's all good. What is the craziest thing you guys have ever done for a pet? I have accepted gifts from a family cat in the form of dead, dead rodents. 
Uh, oh. And the cat was so proud to present them. Yeah. I couldn't reject them. No. Uh, what I did after I was presented with the gifts is, is you know, I took care of them, but... Uh, Man, there wasn't a day for a long string that would go by. Because once they see you accept it for one time. Yes, present you with a gift of honor. Love that. Yeah, that was was an interesting time Yeah, in my pet life. (laughs) Yeah. The other thing that comes, I mean, the reality is I rescued my cats. So um, they were, both of them uh, were, it was raining, pouring down rain. And one was hiding under a wheel well. Wheel well, is that what you call Mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other one was just up against a brick wall thinking she was hiding. And so we went out and put them in the box and brought them inside. Oh, so you like legit, re- like yeah, legit. Yeah, I didn't go to yeah, a like, rescue. I, like, I, like I, I went, went to a out, shelter and said. I went outside and yeah. brought the cats okay. inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good so. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. I'm a big shelter guy. I, do, I work with a shelter. That's yeah, it's the important. Best. Save uh, the animals. So much of, of being a spy is holding on to secrets and not spilling them. But also I feel like you guys have to do that as actors and you don't get enough credit for it, whether it's mm. casting news or plot points or whatever the case may be. In your careers, what is the biggest secret that you guys have had to hold? That maybe is out now, so it's not a big deal to talk about it. But the, the By big... far, this movie. Yeah! <laughs> we have been... Doing this fucking junket, this man, movie. is the most we, impossible it's thing. No, it's not. It's, I, I, I'll volley you there. Okay. Because although you can't mm. give away the movie, mm. you want to be able to encourage audiences who have now seen the trailer. Mm. So if we if the trailer wasn't out, I'd agree with you. It'd sure. be a tough, tough sell. Sure. They've seen and tasted what we have in store. And to sure. tell audiences, like, yo... What you see isn't even close to the movie. Right. Yep. You don't really have to describe the main plot points because that's a joy. That's a that's a present that the audience gets by sure. going to the theater. So I'll volley you there. Okay. Fair it's enough. It's just we we got to fill the conversation with getting audiences Fair excited. Enough. That's yeah. enough. I like which that. Is I like that. As opposed to everything being in the trailer, which happens. Because man, they we we are told give them nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you guys get told that in advance. Yes. Oh, oh, really? Bro. Direct quote. And and this has been the and I I've, I've been a member of the DC universe. Sure. This is yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, like you give them nothing compared to nothing. nothing. There's people standing outside. They look like security. Yeah. They're here. They're not done. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the biggest secret I had to keep was I um was ca- when I was cast as Anita. I was cast in October, early October, and then it, the news didn't come out until January 20. And you do not I think piss off Steven Spielberg. No, you don't. You do not. But also, I was I was so new and so nervous. I sure. was like, am I going to lose the job? Is he going to change his mind? He said it was mine. But I don't know. I'm not famous. Oh, Mom's yikes. The Mom's the word. So I just literally, I told nobody except I'm so sorry that didn't work out well for you. It's a bummer that, you know, it's, it's I, such a shame. I appreciate a, him yeah. taking a big risk. I'm <laughs> sorry I let you down, sir. Oh, I'm going to cut you guys loose on this. I love in a PG-13 film when there is the one F-bomb that you're allowed because I feel like oh. there's so much emphasis. <laughs> but I'm just going to say that you have delivered some of my favorite F-bombs in pop culture history. Batman doesn't kill people. Because he's a pussy. He's a dark creature of the night. He's a jackass. Yeah, you should see me in normal existence. I, oh, God. It's a symphony. I am sort of curious, what is your favorite F-bomb that you've been able to deliver on camera? Because I use profanity so much in my normal life. Do you really? There's not a blur. They, not yeah, it's, I think it's all just a gray area. <laughs> Are you a swearer? See, I'm a swearer. I'm a swearer. Are, okay. Then. I think I think I know the room because again, yeah. uh, WWE is a PG product. We I, I meet a lot of families, a lot of kids. I know the room. Yeah. But when I'm in the right room, man, there's like two real words woven into the words you cannot say on television. Just a sailor you yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. And those words are. You can't say him. No, with that attitude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In Chicago? Are you kidding me? That's how you fit right in. That's the Chicago way. <sighs> That's the Chicago way. Guys, thank you for always fitting me in. I appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And seriously. Thank you so much. Always made my life easy. So thank wonderful. You. Oh, thank you. You made my day. Yeah. Pre- our last interview, whenever I popped out, I appreciate you. No, it was you great. You were so the- kind. I appreciated that post, You're too. You're the best. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I appreciate you, Chicago. Guys, good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, I want to talk about the art of the F bomb, specifically when you're crafting a story that you know is going to be probably PG 13, and you know you got to get one, but you're only allowed one. How do you decide who gets it, when to use it, and how much pressure is it to give it to that guy who you didn't in this film? Well, I wouldn't say there's pressure to give it to anyone. I think uh, if you're going to use the F bomb, you might as well make it a bomb mm-hmm. and it explodes and it enhances the story and it is a moment. So I wanted the F bomb to come from the character you least expected the F-bomb to come through. And therefore, it's an explosion instead of a little uh, whimper. I love, have you ever been jealous of anyone else getting an F-bomb over you? I think so. Because I didn't expect it to happen because they told me it couldn't happen. 
So, yeah. Look at that. I, you know, I am fascinated with this idea of an author crafting a character and really not being able to escape that character. Ellie sees Argyle when she looks in the mirror in her everyday life. I'm sort of curious for you guys, the characters you've created, the characters you've played, which one, maybe to not that extreme measure, but which one followed you around the most, the one you kept thinking about, the one that spoke to you in some form or fashion? Uh, for me, Kingsman, because I think um, Eggsy and Harry, so the Colin Firth and the Taron characters, is literally not the two sides of my brain molded. <laughs> so that 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 that's probably the most. That's my. That's someone said what was autobiographical. Believe it or not, I would say Kingsman. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Mr. Jackson, Zeus in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Why? Uh, Which is my favorite Die Hard, by the way. Yeah, what's well, the best one? Almost, <laughs> no, it's, it's, almost no, it's the best, good. It's it's second best. Yeah. But uh, uh, I remember watching Die Hard the first time. My friend Reggie is the cop who's outside, mm-hmm. and I was always like, "How do you get that job?" You know, and I always wanted to be in a Die Hard movie. Eating so Twinkies. when they came to me with that Die Hard idea, I was like, "Yes, I'm yeah. in." Hell and yes. I realized my job was to be. Well, Zeus was the character, but it was just me being in a Die Hard movie with with John McClane and going and looking at him like he's out of his mind every time he's suggested to do something Fair enough. stupid. I feel like I've seen you look at me in the years on junkets, just <laughs> yeah. out of his mind. You've only what asked are you laughing few, for? You've only asked yeah. a few questions that <laughs> yeah. made me look at you there. Fair, Fair enough. Not Fair enough. Yeah. Um, you know, I, really quick, before we get back to this film, I'd love to, just because you bring up some of your classic films, this year's the 30th anniversary of what I think might be the greatest film ever made, which is Pulp Fiction. Is it? I'm just sort of curious oh, right. what your favorite memory on that set was before you knew the movie that that was going to become and where you think Jules is today. Oh, on that set, we shot the diner scene first. That was the first thing we shot. The extras in the diner thought John and I were undercover cops. No way. <laughs> Wait, wh- 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 how did? How do you know that they thought that? How did that get back to you guys? Because we asked them. We asked them, who do you think we are? And they you are like, undercover cops. <laughs> wow. Mm. You're in here to, to catch these two people that are robbing us. It's like, oh, okay, fine. So that was, that was kind of fun. How much of Ezekiel do you still remember? Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. All of it. Do you really? Sure. Wow. How do you forget that? Where we're going, we don't need roads. 